Okay, I'm back from Comic-Con, and it seems like just a few trailers have dropped since I've been away, so let's get right on to it. The biggest trailers of the week came from Warner Bros. this time around, starting with Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and yep, those are monsters alright. The trailer is kinda weird to be honest, it's very hopeful and awe-inspiring, considering we're talking about a set of monsters, any one of which would have no qualms with leveling a city. Moving on to monsters on a smaller scale, we also got a trailer for Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald. I don't actually know what I'm looking at here, but it sure looks neat. And hey, look at that! Comic book characters at Comic-Con! Warner Bros. gave us a better look at Aquaman and it looks pretty great. Bright colors, funny quips, cool looking underwater worlds, no complaints here. Likewise, Shazam! Also looks like a ton of fun. Okay, the kid playing Billy Bastion may be a bit too old to buy as an earnest child, but Zachary Levy makes up for it. I can't wait for this one, it is about damn time that Warner Bros. gets over their whole grim dark angsty shit and have some fun. Where's Batman? Ugh. Ugh. Ah. Fuck Batman. Oh Christ. Yes, that is the first trailer for Titans. You know you don't have a great grip on the source material when your trailer shows Dove of Hawk and Dove going full on Zack Snyder on dudes. The Raven stuff looks pretty cool at least, but that's about all I can salvage out of this mess. Not that it matters, since DC Universe is getting my money anyway for Young Justice Outsiders. The long-awaited Season 3 will focus on metahuman trafficking and eventually put the team up against Darkseid, so we have that to look forward to. Outside of DC, The Gifted is rolling along over on Fox. A new trailer for Season 2 has the renegade mutants trying to recover Polaris from, I think, the Hellfire Club. Also on Fox, The Orville is coming back for Season 2, and it looks to be just as old-school Trekkie as before with that Seth MacFarlane spin. It seems that at least the first episode will focus on a First Contact story, so that's pretty cool. And back to movies, Fox also released the official trailer for Aelita, Battle Angel, which looks super great. Everything about this looks amazing, even Aelita's crazy big CGI eyes. In fact, the sentence I'm saying right now is completely unnecessary, I just want an excuse to play the trailer a little longer. Because it looks that cool. Really. Heading into sci-fi, Deadly Class looks like a neat new show. Based on the Rick Remender comic and produced by the Russo brothers, it's about a boarding school for degenerate kids to learn how to be assassins. So, kind of like Hogwarts, but with a little less magic. Across the pond, the BBC revealed the first trailer for Doctor Who's 11th series. Thankfully, it doesn't seem that the 13th Doctor will be dressed like Wesley Crusher the entire time. And coming from even further across the pond, Hall H hosted anime for I'm pretty sure the first time where Funimation presented a trailer for the upcoming Dragon Ball Super movie, introducing Broly to the proper series canon. Also in animation, Nickelodeon released the first look at the Invader Zim revival movie, Invader Zim Enter the Florpus, so that's something to look forward to. And even though the show was promoted last year, DuckTales is still working its way through its first season. Obviously, you can't tease a season 2 when season 1 isn't over yet, so instead we got a teaser for the big first season finale. And while technically not a show, Insomniac did release a new story trailer for the upcoming Spider-Man game, and the more I see of this game, the more I want to see of it. But of course, the big surprise announcement coming out of Comic-Con this year came from the Star Wars Clone Wars 10th Anniversary panel. What was assumed to just be a nostalgic retrospective on the long-cancelled series turned into an unexpected celebration as it was announced that Clone Wars would be coming back. A new season of 12 episodes will be produced for the upcoming Disney streaming service, exploring stories leading up to Revenge of the Sith that didn't get a chance the first time around. In other Star Wars news, Lucasfilm has announced the cast for Episode 9. All the usual suspects are present and accounted for, but most interesting is news of the returning classic characters. Billy Dee Williams will finally reprise his role as Lando Calrissian, Mark Hamill will be back as Luke Skywalker, if only as a Force ghost, and the question of what they're going to do about General Leia has been answered. No recasting or CGI replacements for the deceased Carrie Fisher, her part will instead be cobbled together out of unused Episode 7 footage. And hey, remember before I left that Nathan Fillion was teasing something Uncharted related? Well, it turns out he went ahead and teamed up with director Alan Ungar to make a 15 minute fan movie, and really, it's pretty decent. Speaking of fan films, well, this is more of a sanctioned promotion, but either way, did you ever want to see Ryu and Chung Lee join the Power Rangers? Because that's what Bat in the Sun is getting up to with their upcoming crossover movie inspired by a mobile game. 
But wait, we're not done with trailers quite yet because Netflix just released the first look at Castlevania Season 2 and it looks just as great as the first season. This is one of those that reminds me why I keep Netflix around. And now that we know what's coming up to dethrone Infinity War, let's look at upcoming releases, starting with... Christopher Robin. Disney brings us the live-action Winnie the Pooh movie that nobody ever asked for, giving us a Christopher Robin that is either rediscovering his childhood or having a complete mental breakdown. Next up, there's... The Darkest Mind. While rumors persist of Fox shelving their upcoming X-Men movies, that isn't stopping them from putting out The Darkest Minds, which is basically an X-Men movie in everything but name. And for something funnier, we have... The Spy Who Dumped Me. Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon get wrapped up in an international espionage adventure, bumbling and involuntarily manslaughtering their way through Europe to save the world and deal with their relationship issues. Over in books, Dragon Age fans can enjoy a crime noir drama with Varric Tethris's Hard in Hightown, a novel about a pair of guardsmen getting caught up in a conspiracy over an ancient artifact. For another crime novel, Edgar Cantro presents This Body's Not Big Enough for Both of Us, a funny detective story about twin private eyes that are stuck sharing a single body. And if you're super excited about the upcoming Predator movie, The Predator Hunters and Hunted is the official movie prequel by James Moore. And in video games, while everybody was busy at Comic-Con, No Man's Sky finally came out on the Xbox One. After nearly two years since launch, word has it that the game is almost ready for release. Also out last week, Mega Man X Legacy Collection came out, collecting eight Mega Man X games on the platform of your choosing. Likewise, the Banner Saga 3 will finally conclude the award-winning Viking RPG trilogy. For games coming out this week, we have Hag's Castle, which looks like a simple but well put together dungeon explorer. I don't know why it caught my eye, but it did. Chasm is yet another great looking Metroidvania style platform that I'd love to have time to play, just add it to the list I guess. Detective Failure is an RPG maker murder mystery that forgoes fantasy combat in favor of navigating your way to one of 11 endings, which is a pretty neat use of the system. Iro Hero is a nice looking shmup that claims to have puzzle elements mixed in with the bullet hell gameplay. And if you're looking to question your sanity, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is getting a VR edition, so good luck with that. Maybe afterwards you can unwind with Yoga Lessons VR. Yep, this is a totally legit game that's just about learning yoga. No other selling points here. As a gift from Sega to PC users, Yakuza 0 is getting a PC port this week with 4K resolutions and uncapped frame rates for those who need the best visuals for your Japanese crime drama. Also tangentially Sega related, Tanglewood, originally a Kickstarter project to make a physical Genesis game in the 21st century, is aiming for a slightly larger audience this week with a digital release on Steam. Speaking of Kickstarter, it looks like you can't keep a good dog down. From the creators of They Bleed Pixels, Russian Subway Dogs looked like it was in the pound after a failed Kickstarter attempt, but it seems that they secured some outside funding to get the game out the doggy door. Another notable title, This is the Police 2, puts you in the shoes of another officer trying to straddle both sides of the law, this time as a sheriff in a northern border town. And back to RPG Maker releases, Shy Chess looks like a weird puzzle game. I'm not exactly sure how it plays, but I admit I am curious. Heading over to consoles, exclusive to the Switch this week, Code of Princess EX is a remastered port of the 3DS original side-scrolling beat-em-up RPG. Also heading for the Switch, Sultan Sanctuary, the 2D Dark Souls styled game that has been crushing gamers since 2016, is finally expanded to the Nintendo console. And a game making its console debut on the Switch is Crush Your Enemies, which still looks like a silly RTS game. Meanwhile, Iconoclast is a Game Boy Advance styled action platformer that's available everywhere else, but will feel right at home when it finally arrives on the Nintendo system. Guns, Gore, and Cannoli 2 also makes its console debut this week on the Switch as 1940s gangsters unleash Metal Slug inspired wrath on Nazi Germany. And another retro-styled shooter, Not A Hero Super Snazzy Edition will be an Xbox One exclusive no longer as it heads for the Switch. But that's not it for Nintendo because the 3DS is still a thing. If you're a fan of Wario, WarioWare Gold has 300 microgames to play if you want to get that last bit of use out of your 3DS before it becomes completely obsolete. 
That leaves us with this week's awesome video. If you're a fan of Eevee, hat-loving gamer has some ideas about what happens when you fuse the Evolution Pokémon with others for results of various success. Gotta say, Mekion looks pretty badass. And that's everything, so what was your favorite Comic-Con trailer? What movie or show are you looking forward to the most? Let me know in the comments. If you're a fan of this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Pass it around to your friends even, and have a great week!